Let's do Ellie, it. good to see you, man. Welcome to Pop Turner. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me. Um, I love when I watch a genre bending movie like Love Virtually, man. I love I just love it. You know what I mean? I love when you just make a sandwich with many different elements and you get this awesome movie. So was that kind of the plan? You want to kind of throw a lot of elements, see what sticks a little bit, or did you have kind of a concrete idea of what you wanted to do and it just kind of evolved a little bit? No, I mean it really it really was the former. We we had a ton of ideas and we're like, let's just throw in everything in the kitchen sink. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that was, it originated from just a bunch of wacky, goofy ideas and, uh, and no real system of checks and balances. I mean, the main thing too, is obviously, you know, the virtual reality is a big component of it. It's kind of a lot of that stuff, you know, Oculus and the VR, VR and everything that I feel like is just we find that we're learning more about it every kind of week. So and so, right. There's new developments totally. and everything. So that's kind of interesting. But the thing that's like, you know, not like we're not reinventing the wheel about is, you know, the love story, right. And finding love and everything. So I find you have this really cool thing where there's this push and pull with traditional kind of elements with a love story with this whole kind of digital VR kind of world and everything. Did it feel kind of like a ping pong match kind of writing this movie a little bit? Yeah, so the the origin of what the idea was supposed to be was we started writing this at the very beginning of COVID, April yeah. 2020. Um, I was working on another project that I wanted to shoot that got shut down. <laughs> that was not going to happen. So I was like, all right, I want to shoot a movie for very little money and it's safely. Uh, and so I spoke to my business partner, Cheston, about it. And we were trading ideas back and forth. And originally, it was supposed to be a bunch of zoom meetings essentially it was supposed yeah. to be like love over zoom and it's like all right what can we shoot for very little money and whatever nobody's in the same room and then we got more and more ambitious and we're like well what if they all meet up at this like zoom party that everyone was doing at the beginning of covid which you know like zoom happy hour <laughs> uh, and then we were like yeah that would be a really boring movie so well what if they all meet up in vr and so it just the, the ideas got more and more ambitious um but the the baseline of like these kind of dysfunctional relationships and, and dysfunctional people trying to find love in a digital world that that was all like the foundation was all there but the, the utility of using like the metaverse that uh that evolved um that evolved pretty quickly when we realized that uh a movie on zoom would be would be awful to <laughs> yeah well i don't know i mean i feel like you have to kind work, of huh? work with what you had at the time right where we couldn't go anywhere you know what I mean? <laughs> so. so we had we had to find ways of of shooting it safely, and yeah. you know, it was uh, challenging for sure. The animation in this is awesome. Talk a little bit about that and how that kind of came into play as well. Because at one point you have these kind of ideas, like you said, like I love yeah. how you're setting it up, right? About how every week it became more ambitious and it became more kind of concrete of what you wanted to do. Yeah. But like, talk about like the incorporation of the animation component of this film. So when we made the decision that we were going to try to build, and it was supposed to be, I think one scene at the end was going to be animated. And it obviously kept growing. We're like, let's just do 30, <laughs> let's do 30 scenes. In it. Yeah. I was about to say, yeah. there was a lot of it. At one point. There was a lot of animation. <laughs> so my business partner, who's literally never animated anything in his life. Um, and is not even, was not, wasn't even a film guy before any of wow. this. I didn't have that on the bingo card at all. <laughs> no. So he was like, all right, well, you know, let me see, if, let me look into animation. Let me see if I can like, let, let's figure out how we can do this ourselves. So, um, so he, we animated, I mean, and by we, I mean, he did, and I was in a mocap suit, 30 scenes, 30 something scenes, uh, himself. Um, so he just spent 14 hours a day sitting in his basement, like learning how to animate from scratch. Uh, we, we eventually ended up sending off those scenes to um, an animation company that, that cleaned them up and, and, and fixed up the mocap. And, but yeah, he, uh, yeah, was like bound and determined to, to, to do the initial animation himself, which saved us like an absurd amount of money. There's no way we wouldn't have been able to make the movie without him doing that. So yeah. It was it was our bubble gum and tape approach. Yeah, I have that on the bingo card that he did not because it looked pretty awesome and it looked pretty. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's awesome. I mean, getting a little deep and philosophical here. I mean, you know, you kind of already. I mean, your answer to this question is probably going to have to do with the fact that this this movie kind of came to be around the pandemic and like the idea of not being yeah. able to kind of shoot. But like, I feel like a lot of these characters, Ellie, are going through you know, a lot of self-reflection and figuring things out. And I think they're a lot more complicated 
than they appear to be, to be honest with you. Even a lot of the characters that we don't see on screen as much as the main characters, there's this self-reflection, soul-searching component. And during totally. the pandemic, we were doing that for like three years because we <laughs> had the time to do that, right? So I that feel was like everybody. You yeah, so I feel like you watch a movie like this, like Love Virtually, and like it becomes instantly more relatable because of the fact that we were doing it. I'm just curious if like after you wrapped, if you thought about that at all, the self-reflection component and the pandemic. Totally. I mean, the yeah. pandemic completely changed the tra trajectory of my life as well as, I mean, kind of everybody's life. But yeah. um, I got I got married a little bit after the, you know, after the pandemic started, like, and I don't know that I necessarily would have had the pandemic not hit. Uh, yeah, the pandemic, yeah, it was, it was just a, a, a crazy time of, of self-reflection and trying to figure out uh, what I what I really wanted in life. And I, yeah, I think that was that was so common um for so many people to, to like just take a breather and <laughs> get back to the to, to one's truest essence this is straight up like a yes or no question and this could be a throwaway if, if the answer is like yeah it was the plot i mean you know you're also in this movie that you wrote a directed yeah was that the plan all along no okay no, great good because if you said <laughs> yeah you know that <laughs> It was okay. not. Okay, good. So, like, let's talk about that a little bit. Because, yeah. like, you're wearing many hats, not, like, already with being a writer, being a director, and you're also in the thing, too. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. it was not the plan at all. I was going to do a little director cameo, like, just something to just to, to have a little, like, oh, check it out. I'm, I'm in the movie also. But, you know, for, like, <laughs> five seconds. Uh, this was not the plan at all. We had a short list of other people that I really wanted to play, mm -hmm. Calvin. And then for one reason or another uh, – they were either unavailable or just kept getting typecast as that character. And they're like, I don't want to play the douchey villain or whatever. So uh, we got down to, I think it was like a week or two before filming started and we just did not have anybody. Um, and uh, 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 evidently it's really hard to find, um, to find uh, douchey white guys to play roles in LA, you know, and, and we just, we could not find any, we could not find someone to fit the role. And Cheston was like, yeah, you're, you're going to do it because I'm not spending more time or money finding somebody. So yeah. I wasn't really given a choice. I was just, he was just like, you're going to play this role. Go bleach your hair. Yeah. And the cast of this is awesome. It, it like just, everyone does an amazing job specifically like, you know, Sherry's Sherry Terry's in this movie, you know, Steven did an amazing job as well. Yeah. You see the whole gang behind you, which is awesome in the backdrop. Yeah. Everyone's there. <laughs> That looks like a really cool poster you'd want to have on your wall. I feel like that's the thank point, you. right? <laughs> yeah, thank you. I, I, uh, I made it a few weeks ago. Yeah, also. no, it looks awesome. It's definitely good. That's not like, but that's not the official poster of the movie, right? This is the this is the um, the horizontal poster. This yeah. is for like the ba the banner poster. The official oh. one is yeah, is a little different. Okay they're both great but like you know i yeah. like i just was looking at because like when i came on that was the first thing i that came to mind with your background I'm like man that looks really good <laughs> thank you um i feel like wearing many hats in the entertainment industry just kind of happens because of like you said the financial component of indie filmmaking and everything um how much of it becomes overwhelming over time for you or how much does it become kind of just second nature in terms of just kind of being in there and wearing many hats because i feel like people that know even if they've done they haven't done it before they know from everyone else they hear about that you are going to wear a lot of hats and it's yeah. not going to be glamorous and it's not going to be comfortable but where are you at with that as like a filmmaker right now in terms of doing many things so i i I've been doing this for a really long time yeah. in the sense that like I've, I've had to wear, uh, I've had to wear all the hats and especially when you first starting off, you move out to LA and whatever, like I was shooting everything myself. I was editing everything myself and th you know, I wasn't exactly, you know, Scorsese, but it was just the, 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 um, the idea is I couldn't, I, I couldn't charge a lot of money to shoot things when I was first starting off. So it was like, all right, I can't, I can't afford to hire an editor on this project. I'm getting paid a hundred bucks or whatever to shoot this thing. You know, I can't afford to bring a, a DP. I can't. So you really just have to learn how to do everything yourself. So when it, for this project, um, it really came down to, okay, are there things that I can delegate to other people? And if so, I'm going to do that. And if I, if I know that I want to have a specific, imprint or a specific like i need things implemented in a specific way i'll do it myself so there was there was a lot of that there was a lot of all right i uh i want things done a certain way so i'm, I'm just going to kind of 
switch hats and and do this thing now. Like I edited the movie also. Yeah, um, for sure. Do you remember before the pandemic, like I want to say like 2016, 2017, no. the social media boom <laughs> of like social media marketing and all that stuff and like how it was the big thing and like posting and everything because that was the world I was in basically where like sports, social media marketing and everything. And it Does that not exist anymore? It does exist, but I feel like it was so – everyone at that time, it was so new that everyone had to do like everything. Everyone was yeah. like – editing the videos for you know facebook everyone was making the post scheduling and like there was a lot of things that like people were just kind of thrown in and it like i it wasn't i did like pop turnip used to be kind of this social media podcast when it first started 2015 now it's a full of pop culture media outlet so like yeah. the, like you the pandemic really changed that changed for the better for us oh, yeah. to be honest of you but like it was like you know these conversations of like you know, all of a sudden you think you're going to do one thing and you're doing like 14 things and it's not fun at all. You know what I mean? Like when you were wearing all those hats in the entertainment industry, like there were times where you were probably like, man, this is not fun. You know what I mean? This is not glamorous oh, at definitely all. Get, you know what I mean? It definitely gets overwhelming. There are definitely, yeah. there, there, were, there were points where I was like, I don't understand why I'm, why I'm wearing this hat. Like why, you know, and then what it comes down to is when you're writing, directing, producing, you, like there are no hats that you're not going to wear. Like yeah. you, <laughs> you are responsible for everything. So it was, 100%. and it was also, this is my, this is my first time directing a movie. I really, really wanted it to be good. You know, I really wanted to, uh, to, to come out the gate swinging. So yeah. that, that kept, that momentum kept me going where I was like, all right, I gotta like, let me just, let me just get this thing to be a, to be watchable. A hundred percent directorial debut for you on love virtually, which is going to be available on digital and on demand November 7th. I mean, pretty, pretty soon they're going to be able to check out that Next film. Week. At least so great chatting with you, man. Thanks so much for, Thanks your time. for having me. Thank um, you. Thank you. Could you plug away quickly? The social medias and the Instagram, the website to check out the film and your stuff. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's love virtually movie on, uh, on Facebook, Instagram. I don't know. Do people still use Facebook on Instagram, TikTok. <laughs> Facebook, yeah. uh, and then Love Virtually Movie on YouTube. Um, follow us on uh, on all social media platforms, and go check out the movie on November seventh. It's a good time. Awesome. Well, this has been Pop Turner of YouTube dot com slash Pop Turner for previous episodes. Love Virtually going to be available November seventh on digital on demand. Until next time, it's Le and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. This has been an Autograph Communications production.